Okay. So make yourself comfortable in your chair and to begin with at least trying to sit a little bit forward in 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 your chair. As and when you find your back beginning to sort of ache a bit, complain a bit, do do sit back, but ideally as always when you feel almost like you're sitting on a stool really. Um it takes time to build up the conditioning that you need to do this comfortably for, for, for any length of time. So don't feel that you're kind of stuck in, 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 in this position. But what you're looking for is feet below your knees and do it from the side here, yeah, slightly angled forward. So you've got about a third of your weight in your feet. The remaining two thirds going down through hips and buttocks, so that your upper body and your head in 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 particular is sort of supported by feet and and hips, almost like a slightly off off, off center pyramid. And your hips sink down in into the chair. Draw your chin in a little bit. Let your head just rest on the shoulders. The shoulders themselves. Beginning to, to drop down. So feel supported, as I say, through feet and hips, through your legs, through the chair, of course. Front of your body is supported by your back. It's allowing the, the, the muscles and tissues in the front of your body to release some of their tightness. And this will have a, a, an immediate effect on what's well, about everything, really, all the kind of internal processes like breathing and circulation and so on and so forth will be less will be less restricted. Now just rubbing your hands together. And then tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. Down to one shoulder. And your arm. On the other side. And then upper part of your chest. <clears throat> Down to your belly, light on your belly. And Okay, so sit back in your chair a little bit, go back into the reclining position with your feet out, like you're sitting in a, in a deck chair. And this is a position to just to familiarize yourself with this feeling of just allowing gravity to pull you downwards, to pull you in, into the chair. With the support of the chair, it's a relatively straightforward process, but even then we do find that you know, maybe we're holding a bit of tightness in our neck or something like that. So it's, it's by no means automatic, but this is the, the, the mechanism, if you if you like, the process by which we begin to drop our weight down, to root down in Tai Chi. And this is something that we, 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 we take with us through all of the movements, both seated and standing. Just notice those areas in direct contact with the chair because they're really the first areas that we want to get that opening, releasing feeling. That means nothing to you, they're really just words. Try this as a, a little experiment. Hold your hand, one hand in front of you in a, in a fist and squeeze tightly and carefully, and you feel it very quickly 
gets uncomfortable and you can feel the tightness spreading up, spreading up your arm. If we were to just relax the arm and, and the hand, it would just collapse. There'd be no structure there. But if we can just create a space in the fist, enough of a space to get your finger down the, the middle. As though you were not gripping your fingers, but just had wrapped them around a delicate object like a feather or a precious ornament or something like that, then actually you'll feel the transition from that tight feeling to the more open feeling is the sensation of, of releasing that we want to feel in areas like hips and buttocks, lower back, shoulders, and, and so on and so forth. So releasing, letting go, opening. These, these are all terms that we use to, 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 to describe that, that sort of feeling. So try and sort of imagine that happening around your hips and around whatever part of your back is in direct contact with, with, with the chair to kind of open up the channel as it were. It's a bit like taking the plug out of a bar. This is, this is where initially the tightness, the stiffness in, in say, your chest or your shoulders, is, is, is going to find an escape route. It's going to flow out into the body. And when you bring your feet back in and come back to the upright position, your wet points of contact will be soles of your feet, of course. And again, lower back, hips, buttocks. And in between them, your legs, so the big muscles of your legs, knees, ankles. And when that starts to happen, you'll, you can experience a kind of dropping down through the upper part of your body. And when that happens, you, you can become more aware of what's happening deeper in your body. If you think of, say, your spine, your rib cage, there'll be a releasing feeling, particularly in, in, in your ribs, but they're bones, so they've got a more solid structure than, 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 than muscles, and they provide the kind of inner framework. I sometimes describe it like the the, the effect you might get with a, a mannequin, a dummy in a shop window with, with a garment wrapped around it. The garment itself is very soft, but the, the, the shape is given by what's within, with, within that softness. The phrase that we use in Tai Chi is that outside there's the softness of cotton, inside there's the hardness of steel. Cotton is very soft but strong. Steel, on the other hand, in metallic terms, is, is apparently quite, quite soft. Another example in, I, I, I use sometimes another image that I use sometimes is that if you get, a, say, a balloon um, and you, you push your finger in, to begin with, there's almost no feeling of resistance, but very quickly you become aware of the density of the the the, the balloon and it becomes harder and harder work, but it's never solid. It's, it's, it, it's, it's never hard. This is very much the sort of quality, the tonal quality of, of, of our body that, that, that we want to cultivate and that we want to move with. So when we, we move, particularly people more experienced, you can move with a sense of what, you know, that, that, that inner strength. And then, that very much in mind, turn in your head very carefully and gently, aware of when the, the, the stiffening, the resistance to the movement begins to make itself felt. And ideally what we want to do is, is to stop before that happens, just before that happens. Over a period of time, you'll find that you can begin to move further because the effect of the movement is like water running down a hill, it will gradually dissolve and erode the blockage. So you'll, you'll automatically get more, more movement.
and then hands in front of your shoulders, circling your elbows around. So it's quite useful to start off with these basic exercises, not just because it's good to, to loosen the joints, which of course it is, but also because it means that we can get, develop the practice of focusing on a movement, in this case a very simple movement, and yet at the same time retaining in, in, in the back of our minds some of these basic principles, the routine, that stronger feeling from within the body and so on and so forth. And then going forward. Just as in our outer environment, we might have a kind of very deliberate conscious awareness of something in front of us, you know, maybe somebody you're talking to or in the shop window or something you're looking at outside or something. And yet at the same time, well, where have other things going on in, in, in that environment? Talking to somebody, you may be aware of a, a, a car or a bus coming up behind you and so on and so forth. Bring your hands to your sides. Rotate in your arms. One of the sort of outcomes of bringing your attention into your body in the way that we do in, in, in Tai Chi is that it gives us a measure of stillness in our attention. And in a way, from that kind of perspective, you may well begin to notice of the things that, that are happening. Now bringing your hands up, so you're winding up string or cotton or something like that. Arms and wrists rotating. Go back the other way. And rest your hands. Now, through the bones at the base of your pelvis, the ones that you're sitting on, sometimes referred to as the sitting bones, measure them as the blades of a rocking chair. Tilt forwards. The more of your weight now goes down into your feet, compression your legs a little bit, until they begin to extend, expand, and push, push you back. It's sinking into your hips and lower back, feeling the push. Now, just turn towards one knee a little bit. So now the majority of your weight going into that leg. See if you can just be aware of the, the feeling, the difference in the feeling between the leg that's carrying the majority of the weight, what we would refer to as the full leg in Tai Chi, and the other leg, the empty leg. And then turn in the other direction. And then by moving in your pelvis, drawing your head and shoulders around in a circle, it sort of touches the sides of that square formed by your feet and your head. Spine in the middle of the movement. There's good structure there. 
but quite a soft structure, like a plant in water. Change direction. So these movements, these transfers of weight, becomes one of the principal, if not the principal, driving factor for many of the movements. Good, and then. Just sitting back a little bit, step out with one foot, put your heel down, lower your toes, and step out. Plant in the footballs. And then the other side. And bring your feet back to your hands. Drop your hands down. Feel the weight of your arms hanging from your shoulders. Once again, turn them palm forwards and then tilt forwards, more of your weight going forwards as you rotate them. This bird folds its wings. Chest opening and then closing. Last time going forwards, this time leaving your hands facing back and back, just letting your arms swing down through fisherman cast the net. Try not to let your arms overextend. One more time. And then this time as you push yourself back with your arms being pushed up, roll the ball in towards your chest. <clears throat> I mentioned earlier this idea of, sort of pushing your finger in into a balloon. A very traditional image, but that sort of energy, that feeling being pushed out, referred to as pung or peng, and on that brought into English. But that the image that it uses traditionally is is of a block of wood being pressed down in in into the water. So it's described as a rising, expanding movement. And at the, in the same way, you go forwards in your head as you're holding the ball down into water, and then eventually the ball will push up. And that brings your arms up. One more time. This time as your arms come up, turn them palm in, draw your elbows apart, this pigeon spreads its wings. Chest opening and closing. So every time we go forward, every time we go back, we want to give a little bit of time, just a few moments, to get that feeling of releasing 
and thinking. And from that experience in the response, that push back, that push up, like your finger being pushed out of the balloon of the block of wood and pushed up by the buoyancy of the water. One more time. And then your elbows will still go out a little bit, but your hands come back in front of your hips, pushing wave. Not lifting your hands, but rather maintaining this curved shape, which means that as your hand gets pushed forward and a little bit away from the body, there's a very natural curve up here, rather than trying to sort of be up here and do it to push from there. One more time. And then hands down in front of you, elbows in this time. Fingers wrapped into a soft hollow fist again, pushing forwards. So this one doesn't come up at all, but if you look at the angle of my elbow, unlike with the pushing wave, it straightens out, it doesn't completely lock, and then it bends in. With pushing wave, it stayed the same. Going forward, open your fingers, turn your hands, palm out, wind out. And the last part of this movement, again, like pushing wave. When you come back to this position, you're coming back to that original position. So here, yeah, 30% of your weight in, in your feet. Don't go all the way back. The problem to go all the way back, I can't do it with this hand here, is that here I'm, I'm already sort of aware of the space behind me, the possibility of, of falling backwards. A bit more forwards, I'm, I'm, I'm much more comfortable. This time, turning your hands palm down. Turn your body ease forwards. When your head and shoulders go forwards, just polishing the table, your hips sink back. So in this position here, there's an extension through your spine that reaches your shoulders and continues down through your arms into your fingers.
one more time. Back to the center. This time, turning your hands, palm up. A gentle press down through feet and hip. That same feeling of extension through your spine, extending and contracting. Extending. Contracting. It's that extension that sort of transmits the energy up through the body. But it comes from feet and hip. Just before that happens, just before that press down through feet and hips, you may be aware of a sense of sort of what I would call this compression here in your belly. It's like, like you've got a ball there, or again, that balloon, and you're squeezing it in, <clears throat> and then just letting it expand. All very gently, but what it means is just prior to an extension upwards or outwards, there's always going to be a movement downwards. So again, this idea of rooting down, which is what the exercise is called, the two of our center of gravity going going lower, is an integral part of the movement. One more time. And then change it. Wild goose. As with the previous exercise, but slightly a different expression through the upper body, a bit more open, expansive through the sides. This image of the bird in flight. One more time. And then go forward a little bit here to let your hands drop in front of your knees, coming back into your hips and that same feeling of expansion. Some very much experience through your hands and fingers and arms as well. Just part in the clouds. This is the and my arms are still slightly bent at the end of the movement. It's not meant to be a stretch up. Just trying to feel the expansion up through lower back and belly, solar plexus into your chest. So this basic mechanism of that compression and expansion, we can think of it as being, as I said, in the center of the body, maybe extend it down into our legs and feet as, as well, is really just a consequence and outcome of that yielding to the pressure of, of gravity, to the pull of gravity through our body. If I go to here and I stiffen up my shoulders, I don't get that compression. If I drop them with that kind of feel, then I will get pushed up again. That was all very exaggerated. But this time, then go forwards, just let your hands drop down with the weight of your arms hanging from your sides. And with the next expansion, pushing one hand up, so just drag them back to the stars from the sky. So that mechanism of, that comes out of the yielding to the pull of gravity. It's one of the really fundamental cycles of energy. Movement downward with the pull of gravity and our body's response to that, which is not to collapse, 
rather to absorb and then release. It's a constant movement within our bodies. One more time. Bring both hands in, push up again this time. Hands going a little bit above your head. And then down. Push out. So the rhythm, one way or another, is, is constant. And in these exercises, it's a very regular rhythm. is isn't always the case. Expanding is the yang aspect. Contracting is the yin aspect. I'm always looking to, to maintain a balance and a harmony between those two sides. This time, as your arms extend out, put one foot out, rest your heel on the ground, turn your hands palm forward, ease down towards your foot. There you're scooping water up in your arms, and you sit back and throw the water back over your head. Be careful of your back. Don't go too far. It doesn't have to be a big movement. Well, if you go far enough, you'll get a very soft stretch in. Your, your back and the back of your legs. But that's not necessarily the main aim. You just want to feel this movement in, in, in the pelvis. And rather than stretch, think of your back being massaged. Just recognize that this is quite a strong exercise. Push your hands again, coming back, and this time going forwards, but the length of your back pushes your head upwards. And we bring our arms through afterwards. Just grasping the tiger's ears, hands again, loosely fisted. Try the same movements with your other foot forwards, scooping the sea, looking at the sky, and grasping the tiger's ears. So I'm changing. Grasping the tiger's
good. And then we repeat that pattern. Just sitting again for a few moments in this position. The qualities of this posture, rooting down, that sense of what I described as inner strength, release of tightness in, particularly in, in, in your upper body, but the sense that there's some space for movement within your body, for the flow of the blood, your breath your energy, uh, all things that we want to try and look for in the upright, in the standing position. The structure will be slightly different, but feeling will, will be the same. So having a sense of what that feels like is actually very really useful when we come to uh, the standing. Okay, now once again, rubbing your hands together. And tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. One shoulder, your arm. Inside. In belly. And in legs. And then just pushing your heels up just to get a bit of feeling back into your legs after sitting. And circling your knees around. And back the other way. And then, if you wish to stand, stand in carefully. I'm going to get my chair out of the way so I don't keep bumping into it. But um, it can be quite useful with some of the movements. Just have the chair there, a bit of extra support. Um, especially if it's a movement that you're not used to, um, or you're finding a, a, a bit tricky, can be a good way of, of helping you to, to understand the movement. And how, how you can begin to do it. So we want to reproduce the same feelings, the same qualities with with within the body as as we felt in 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 the chair. Structurally, it's going to be different, but with that awareness of what you're looking for, you, you, your intent can actually help you to find the the right structure. You kind of know the feeling that you're looking for. You may not know exactly how to to to, to get to it. So have your feet hip width apart, toes pointing forwards or very slightly turned out. And in the first instance just rocking your weight forwards and backwards. You're pivoting from your ankle. Try not to let your heels or your toes come off the ground because that probably means that you've gone too far. And just see how far it's possible to go before that happens and before your body starts to really stiffen up. And in practice, you'll find that that's between the front part of your heel and the balls of your feet, give or take a millimetre or two. So it's a bit like if I get this stick and I want to rest it on, on the ground, 
then in theory, if I can find the, the position for it, it'll be there. In practice, it's doing this. What I don't want to happen is this. Boom. 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 over. And if we imagine the pole had been the center line of my body, you see what I'm doing is this. See how my body relates to the pole. I'm not doing this. Or any other var var variation on 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 that, and just see if you can begin to get a sense of when you pass through some kind of neutral point. I won't call it a midpoint because it might not be the middle of your foot. But here, when I'm slightly forward, there's a slight feeling of being pulled forward. Not an uncomfortable one. Not enough to make me stiffen up. Likewise, going back. Once again, it's there. But somewhere in between those two points, there's this neutral position where my weight is being pulled straight down in, in into my feet. And this is where I want to come to rest. And this is in the, the position where, once again, we can get that sense of the rooting down, the dropping of our center of gravity. We can maybe feel that dropping in our hips, that whole area of lower back, hips, buttocks slightly overhanging, softening your knees. And with the hips dropping down, there seems to be space for your rib cage and then your shoulders dropping down. So the, the soft tissue of the body releases a little bit, well, that, that idea of releasing, of, 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 of letting go, almost sort of revealing that sense of inner strength. And you know, it might be helpful to think of the skeleton. There's more to it than that, but that's not a, not a bad part, uh, starting point. And it's, it's good to know that when we release tightness in the, the, the body, we don't just collapse. We can build a, a sense of confidence in that. And then taking that a little bit further, just letting the hips drop back and push up, body expanding and contracting. And again, we can begin to feel that sense of expansion, lengthening, contraction in our spine, but also very aware, come a bit closer so you can see, of our legs. It's, I mean, the legs are used in the chair, but I think it's much clearer what our legs are doing here. That same sense, and, you, know, you could imagine, I talked about the, the, the ball, the balloon in, 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 in the belly. Imagine you're squatting onto a ball, like one of these big blue balls you get in gyms, and you're sort of dropping down and, and bouncing up. So once again, the root, the, the yielding to the pull of gravity is really the initiation of this major cycle of, of energy going down and up, working constantly through, through your body. And we, 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 we very much build on that in Tai Chi, bringing your hands around, pushing it up, using that energy to expand the upper body, to push your arms up, and then pressing down. So that kinetic energy begins to blend with other energetic processes, you know, the food that we eat, the energy we absorb from the environment in one way or another. Change into the wild goose. So that's a constant, and through our intent, as we change movements, maybe with a different image working, we, we essentially create the patterns that are so characteristic of Tai Chi. And then part in the clouds.
Keep your legs in shape. Change your stance. Keep your feet hip width apart. Turn one foot out, the other foot in front. So imagine you're standing on the diagonal corners of a square. Not too long, but long enough so that you've got some, some movement there. And once again, begin to transfer your weight. So again, this is a, a major uh, movement in, in Tai Chi. It's also, and you've heard me say before, it's also very much a, a, a key element in our general mobility, aside from the Tai Chi. The yielding, sinking down through, through, through the pull of gravity, again, is, is, is crucial here. If I come closer, I'm going to exaggerate this. I don't want you to do this. I just want you to see, in a sense, what, 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 what I'm feeling. I go into my back leg. I allow that sense of releasing through hips and so on. I feel the pull of gravity. And I get this feeling of dropping in into that leg. And again, it's going to push me up. It's like dropping onto a trampoline. It pushes me up. But instead of letting it push me up, I let it push, I intend for it to, for it to push me forwards. And then the same thing going, get going back. I would emphasize that it doesn't necessarily involve your knee bending anymore. Your knee needs to be soft because otherwise it will block the, the, the movement. But it's much more to do with this feeling that I said at the beginning of the class, you know, the clenched fist to the more open fist, that sense of releasing, of not resisting the pull of gravity. So you could argue that gravity is a, 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 a one of the key things that creates movement for, for us, that, that, that dynamic, and certainly in Tai Chi, that dynamic right at the beginning, as it were, the start of the cycle is very important. So the rooting down is crucial for our stability, of course. The lower your center of gravity, the more stable you are. The lower your center of gravity, the less weight you're carrying in your upper body, the more, the more kind of open, the less tension there is. But also, as, as, as we get to know the feeling better, we, we, we realize that it's not just about that, but it's also the, 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 the thing, as I said, that, that initiates the movement, that initiates the flow of energy. And then we bring our intent into the movement to create whatever pattern, whatever shape is appropriate. This time, when you go back into your rear foot, Raise your toes, feel more of your weight flowing down through that leg. Going forward, I've turned my front foot out a bit, push your back knee forwards, more weight going down through your front. So gradually, we get a sense of what we refer to as the empty leg, the leg without the weight in it. And that's the foot, the leg that we're going to step with. You bring your foot in and step out. Bring your foot in and step out. Good, okay. And then on the other side. So hip width across your feet, transferring your weight, giving you to have time to really feel that sense of releasing. So there's this just moment of resting in foot. These, these are the moments I described as being like the, the, the comma in, in a sentence. It's not an absence of movement. There's just a little bit of space there. So what we start to get from this is something which is really quite deep in Tai Chi, really important, which is that a quality that we might refer to as stillness. In other words, we're not just going forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards, so going forwards and then there's the comma, going forwards and then there's the comma, which is, for me, one of the characteristics of, of, of Tai Chi is crucial for our movement and our stability, as well as being really one of the great outcomes, one of the great benefits of the art.
and then raising your toes and your heel. And then stepping in. And then taking a few steps forwards or backwards. Remembering, don't just go straight into the step, settle down, raise the back heel, it's not a race. And we get a chance to just to experience this process of walking. I'm gonna change direction now. Good and shake out. <clears throat> Have your right foot forwards. Start with your weight in your back foot. Ease forward, settle into your front foot, turn to your left, and let that movement swing your arm down. Go back into your rear foot, turn to your right, swing out. This is wind blows the willows. So it's the you know, we, we yield, we sink into the front leg, we feel that expanding energy rising up through the body, letting it move our arms and just directing it into a shape that's very similar to the wild goose. But the image here is of the willow tree with its deep roots. Take your time. One more time. Good, and then just shake. Have your left foot forward. Check your stance. Move your weight into the front leg. Turn into your right. And in that movement, just swing your arms through. Excuse me. Expanding, contracting, expanding. Now this time, turn your front foot out, so when you go forwards, you're able to bring the rear foot in, take a step forwards, just dragonfly skims the wall. Then on the other side, and if you're comfortable with this, you know, by no means necessary, but you, know, you may find that you're able to just raise your leg. Be careful with that. This might be an action I was referring earlier to sometimes you might want to use a little bit of support just to investigate how you can do this movement without throwing yourself offline. It's quite tricky. 
and then going back. And while there's a little bit of a wobble every now and then, just look for that feeling of releasing. If necessary, put your foot down quickly, obviously. But sometimes you start to wobble. And you're just releasing the hips a little bit. You can get that stability back. Dragonfly skims the water. Bring in your feet power. And shake it out. Lovely. Go back to your chair. It's important that we understand that all these things that I'm talking about, you know, the quality of inner strength, the rooting down, everything that comes out of that, aren't fixed things. They come and they go. Um, the important thing is that we can get them back. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's never going to be there the, the whole time, either stuff, you know, to do with mind or body. Um, this last exercise, Embrace Tiger, re Return to the Mountain, shows there's a kind of cyclical nature to, to, to that process. So let your arms drop down again, feeling the weight of your body, sort of almost compressing through hips, legs, and then letting that movement push you up, expanding, bringing your arms around in the circle, already aware of that pull downwards, and yield into that. And coming back to this image of the mountain, this, the, the strength, the space, the stillness, the calmness that we might associate with that image. And then let your hands come to you. Just take a couple of slow, gentle breaths. Lovely. Thank you very much, everybody, as always. Whether you're live here or watching on on YouTube. Bye for now.